So in this video, we are going to see about epidermopoiesis, that is epidermal dynamics and kinetics. So this epidermis is under a phase of constant proliferation and differentiation. So for this to normally happen, the epidermal cell production should match the rate of cell loss. So the cell cycle, it consists of four phases. So the M phase or mitotic phase, G1 otherwise called as the interphase or intermitotic phase or post mitotic phase S phase which is the stage of active DNA synthesis and then G2 it is nothing but the resting phase there is another phase called G0 which is called as Cusen phase So the stem cells are nothing but they are small clusters in the basal interfollicular epidermis. So if you see the cell cycle, the intermitotic time is the time interval between two successive mitoses. So the cell cycle is the happens during the intermitotic time that is the time interval between two successive mitoses and the four phases as I mentioned already M, G1, S, G2 and the fifth one is G0 otherwise called as Cusen phase. So the duration of the normal cell cycle is around 50 to 457 hours whereas in psoriasis it is only around 36 hours and the mitotic division it takes place around every 18 to 19 days so it takes place in the basal layer of keratinocytes. So what is epidermal turnover time? It is the time taken by keratinocytes to pass from basal layer to stratum corneum and the skin surface. So the approximate epidermal turnover time is around 52 to 75 days. That is from basal layer to stratum corneum it takes about 12 to 19 days and from stratum corneum that is through the stratum corneum it is about 14 days. So the regulation of epidermopoiesis, here we have stimulatory signals, inhibitory signals and then the signal transduction complex etc. We will see one by one. So the key components mainly include NF-kappa beta, WNT beta catenin pathway, alpha catenin sonic hedgehog pathway, this P63 which is the epithelial immunohistochemistry marker and the beta 1 integrin. So the stimulatory signals it mainly includes growth factors like epidermal growth factor, transforming growth factor and then this you have an autocrine and paracrine stimulatory signals here so this TGF alpha it has an autocrine action it binds to epidermal growth factor receptor and stimulates the growth of keratinocytes another one is amphiregulin it is also an autocrine KGF stimulator so next one is interleukin 1 6 and granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor and then here you see next one is the paracrine factors for keratinocyte growth stimulation which includes the dermal fibroblast and then the endothelial cells. So other growth factors are fibroblast growth factors. So all these growth factors and then this uh, platelet derived growth factor, interleukin 1 beta, TNF, all of them finally induce the keratinocyte growth factor gene. So which is highly specific for keratinocytes. So these are the stimulatory signals and then this inhibitory signals it mainly acts by negative feedback mechanism and includes this interferon alpha, gamma, TNF alpha and then this TGF alpha etc. And this apoptosis it is a major homeostatic mechanism both in skin and also in hair follicle. In hair follicle this apoptosis marks the onset of catagen phase. So next is the signal transduction pathway. It happens mainly through hormone receptor complex and then growth factors as I mentioned already and then protein kinase C, inositol phosphate and protein tyrosine kinase etc. So this integrins they are mostly present in the basal layer and it has a bidirectional communication. That is it acts a bidirectional communication between the matrix molecules like collagen, fibronectin and laminin and the cytoskeleton of keratinocytes and depending upon the pH amount of calcium and gene expression it helps in the proliferation and differentiation of epidermal cells. So other factors include low calcium which inhibits the differentiation but stimulate function, whereas high calcium it inhibits the proliferation and vitamin A and retinoic acid they are needed for the normal morphogenesis and differentiation of epidermis. So this epidermal differentiation 
During differentiation, the cells move from basal layer to skin surface and then they undergo terminal differentiation to form the stratum corneum. So this process involves five steps. First one is keratinization. Keratinization is nothing but formation of keratin within the keratinocytes. So this takes place with the help of filaggrin that is filament aggregating protein. Number two is cornified envelope and then intracellular lipid formation and then membrane glycoproteins and then growth factor receptors, adhesion proteins and blood group antigens. So all this formation involves complete process of epidermal differentiation. Next one is the formation of cornified envelope. So in this it involves formation of envelope precursors like involucrin and then the cytosolic precursors like SPR, SPR1 or pancornolin and other envelope proteins including scalp or elafin and keratolinin or cystatin they are cross-linked by transglutaminase and the membrane associated precursors like envoplakin, periplakin and other major component including lorigrin which is a cysteine rich protein. So this cornified envelope how does it look like? Okay. So this is the stratum corneum cornified envelope. Okay, these are the lipids in the stratum corneum. This is the involucrin. So here we have these are the loricrin. So in loricrin, in between we also have this small protein rich protein. It's nothing but the SPR proteins. So here these are the keratin intermediate filaments which are linked together by filaggrin. So this is how the cornified envelope in stratum corneum looks like. So this loricrin it depends upon calcium amount and then the keratinocyte differentiation and also it is down regulated by retinoids. Cross linking between plakin and involucrin and the desmosomal proteins and also the proteins and lipids. So all these cross linking leads to a formation of scaffold which plays an important role in water permeability and barrier function of the skin. So next is the keratinocyte integrins. So this integrin as we mentioned already it forms a bidirectional communication and it also mediates the intercellular additions. So during differentiation there will be loss of integrin expression. So how does it helps us? It allows the keratinocytes to lose the addition to the extracellular matrix and help in the differentiation of keratinocytes. So next is the intercellular junctions. These are the junctions that link the adjacent keratinocytes. They help in mechanical, biochemical and also signaling interactions. So first one, there are four types. The first one is the desmosomes. So what this desmosome does is it connects the cell to cell and also tonofilaments to the plasma membrane. So these are the desmosomes. This you can see the desmosomal plug here. There are two things, two types actually. One is inner plug and another one is outer plug. We are two dense desmosomal blocks and they are about 15 nanometer in diameter. So this is the mid layered zone in between the two blocks of the desmosome. It is about 30 nanometer in diameter and the desmosome it contains desmosomal cadenins that is calcium dependent cell addition proteins which are this is desmocholine and this is desmoglins. So this desmoglin and desmocholine both are desmosomal cadherin proteins. So these are attached to the keratin intermediate filaments with the help of desmoplakin, placoglobulin and placoflin etc. So here you can see in the core we have calcium binding proteins as I mentioned already that is desmoglin and desmocholine. So this desmoglin 1 to 3 and desmocholine 1 to 3 they are specific for the epidermis. So desmoglin 1 and desmocholine 1 they are more in upper epidermis whereas desmoglin 3 and desmocholine 3 they are more in the basal keratinocytes. So this is desmosomes. Number 2 we have ad adherence junction they are calcium dependent and they are associated with actin skeleton through alpha catenin. Third one is gap junctions. 
So their component include connections. They help in transfer of ions and small molecules between two cells. Number four, we have tight junctions, and these are the major regulators of skin permeability and play an important role in barrier function of the skin. And the components include claudin, occludin, junction adhesion molecules. So these are the intercellular junctions. We have the tight junction that is claudin, occludin, and junction adhesion molecules, and the adherence junction. which includes cadherin adhesion receptors and cytoplasmic proteins and the gap junction connections and the desmosomes we see already so the applied aspects of epidermopoiesis is if there is any abnormality in the epidermal development like somatic mosaicism or post zygotic mutation it can lead to aplasia cutis and the mutation in genes for steroid or lipid metabolism can cause x linked recessive ichthyosis If there is any failure for the cornified cells to slough, then it can cause retention hyperkeratosis, and the antibodies to desmoglein proteins can lead to pemphigus, and the absence of filaggrin it can also lead to Harlequin ichthyosis, and keratinocyte abnormalities seen in conditions like psoriasis, eczema, graftosis host disease, pemphigus, etc., and the keratinocyte culture it is mainly used in skin grafting in burns, autograft is used in case of transplantation. and allograft it is used in biological things and the keratinocyte it is mainly play an important role in skin immune system called as skin associated lymphoid tissue and psoriatic keratinocytes the cell cycle duration i mentioned in the starting itself it is around 36 hours and the human growth hormone when transferred to keratinocytes they are used as gene therapy in epidermolysis bullosa So the non-keratinocytes in epidermis are melanocytes and merkel cells in the basal layer and langerhans cells in the supra basal layers mainly in the spinous layer